are Plague Toads of Nurgle, any good. This is your early game, quote, cavalry, unquote, as Kugath and Nurgle generally, if one sets aside Chaos Warhounds with poison. Warhounds are good, but we know what they can do, and we know their fragility. How do the Plague Toads fare? Let us take a closer, nose-pinched look at these Toads of Battle. Please like, subscribe, comment, and consider donating well-sprayed gold coins to my Ko-Fi treasury. I can use all the support in any form you can give. Thanks. Plague Toads cost 650 to recruit in campaign, but as Kugath, it's all global, so you're really staring at 1300. The upkeep is based on the base cost, so upkeep is 162 per turn default. On Ultra, you're getting 24 entities with 6192 health between them, so that's 258 per entity. This means a lot of resistance to basic area of effect spells. Armor is 50, very middle of the road, but a lot better than Nurglings, right? Leadership is 55, which is very decent until you consider the terrible situations cavalry often find themselves in. Physical resistance is 20%, and that's nice, you want that. Speed is 65 default, and that can increase. Melee attack is 30 default, and it's both magical attack and, well, you shouldn't even think about it with this roster, it inflicts poison. Attack interval is 4, which is very mid, and each toad has a medium splash area, damaging a maximum of 3 targets. In a way, that's weak, but in a way it's not bad when you think about how Minotaurs also hit 3 targets max. But these are 24 entities. Melee defense is 24 base, which isn't that hot. Of course, when Minotaurs do that, they hit like Minotaurs, and these are squishy toads. Weapon strength is 50, split unusually narrowly between 24 base and 26 armor piercing, with a bonus versus infantry of 7. Charge bonus is 36, and mass is 1500. Here's the thing. I found it exceptionally difficult to pull the unit out of combat despite recent changes, so by default you should assume that when you commit, you really commit. I mean, the toads are very wide. Cloud of Flies gives this unit a plus 9 to melee defense, so that's 33 at rank 0. Even so, what you're looking at is an exceptionally middle of the road unit that has a decent charge bonus but begs for annihilation when its entities are isolated and surrounded and leadership takes a nosedive leading to crumbling rather than fleeing. In the Lord Redline skills for Kugath and other great unclean lords, because the Chaos Sorcerer stuff is a bit different, Rot Eaters grants a maximum of plus 6 melee defense and plus 9 charge bonus, flat increase to Plague Toads, pushing the effective rank 0 values to 39 melee defense and 45 charge bonus. Rank 7 Toads benefit from Cankerous Spread, adding 10% speed, granting 5 more melee defense, and 10% more physical resistance. In the tech tree, it's remarkably simple. Ravenous Tadpoles grants plus 15% speed and a bonus versus large of 7. That means there are equal opportunity bonus plus 7 versus large targets and infantry at that point, and very little in the Nurgle roster has any bonus versus large, so take what you can get. It's not an exaggeration to say that if you wish to use the Toads at all, this tech is a must-grab before moving on to higher levels. It's not like you're waiting that long to get it, either. Now, as for how you use Plague Toads, this issue has plagued me, pun semi-intended, since starting to learn the faction. Basically, you need to deal with the fact the low number of entities gets them surrounded in a serious melee action. When heavily outnumbered, this really adds up and tends to result in your Toads going down when other units like Plague Bearers or even Nurglings do not. Basically, you need them supported somehow, be it by a hero or blasting chaff infantry with so much magic that they can escape, or with healing or with having four units of Plague Toads moving around as a goon squad because they proliferate enough in combat that each individual Toad is less overwhelmed. That last one tends to keep casualties down, but it's not perfect either. Basically, if you want them to act as a hammer, you need to perfect your anvil and have enough mass to join forces with to get them out of combat for a breather when necessary and just overall need to keep a good eye on them. That's hard, that's challenging, but they're an early game unit, so there's no reason to cry too much about them. The bottom line is that they become able to do most of what Chaos Warhounds were doing for you, so if you lose Warhounds, your access to Toads tends to be superior over the course of a long campaign. So, you use Toads more, lean into it and you're probably doing lots of damage on the flanks, and as these stat boosts tell you, you can make them a lot tougher and a lot better able to keep up against ogres and so on than they were before. They stop being just food and start treating your enemies as flies on a lily pad. 
This is a tool for breaking part of a battlefield. If the enemy doesn't break, plan accordingly. If it will, you're greatly improving your situation. That high mass means they'll do a lot of flopping damage on the way in. Maybe you'll have an easier time cycle charging than I did. I wasn't upset about the damage numbers they put up. I had more trouble keeping them alive in the early to mid game. Having said that, they're actually a little cheaper than Plague Arrows, so any effort at all to keep them in your summoning pool, or perhaps pond, and you can replace them aggressively. Take care, and have fun helping your enemies croak! Yes, I wrote that without a single hint of shame.